Hello again. In the last couple of videos, we were talking about functions. The first example, we used a function to be able to encapsulate code that we were going to reuse over and over again as a named function name. What we're going to do in this video is be able to take values that we bring into the function, which we covered last time, and then send values outside the function using what's known as the return statement. If we take a look at the example that I already have loaded up here, we'll see that I have a function called create greeting. Create greeting is accepting one parameter, a string called first name. Again, the first name is a variable name that we're going to reuse just within the scope of the function. So in this case, when I run create greeting, it's going to accept a string which is going to be called first name. If we look at the second line of the function, we have a new line called return. What return is going to do is it's going to take whatever is part of this uh, whatever is part of this evaluation here, which is going to combine the string welcome with the value of the first name variable that's brought in, and then send it back out of the function. If you look at the end of the first line of the function, you'll see that I have a colon string listed at the end. When we use return statement, we need to define what type of value will be sent out of the function. Since the return statement is sending out a string, we need to define this as a string here. In the previous video, we didn't return anything, which is why we use the phrase void here. If we take a look at the first line, we have a trace statement. That trace statement inside, we're executing the function create greeting. We're then passing into that create greeting function the name Doug. What's going to happen is when we have the return statement, the return statement, when it sends the value back, welcome Doug, it's going to replace the function call here. So in essence, this is going to disappear, and then we're actually going to replace that with the string welcome Doug. Let's actually run this to show you what happens. You'll notice that when I run this, the output panel displays welcome Doug. That's again, again, the reason why is it's taking the Doug string here that I'm creating in the create greeting function call. It's passing that in as first name. First name is then added to welcome, which creates the string welcome Doug. And then this return statement is taking that entire string, welcome Doug, and is sending that and replacing the call here. So the trace statement is actually displaying welcome Doug, which is exactly what happens here. Now, whenever you have a return statement, it's going to exit out of the function. So if I put something after that, let's say trace end of function, if I run it, you'll notice that the trace statement in the function never gets executed. That's because the return immediately exits out of the function. So make sure it's always the last line of your function. Otherwise, any code that happens after it will never get executed. So now, we've, now we understand how to accept and how to return values from functions. I want to go over a couple of examples that, of some errors that you might encounter when you're working with functions. So I have a second example here which is called two values. I have a function that's accepting two values, one which is called value one, which is a number, and then the second one which is called value two, which is a string. I'm then taking these two values and I'm outputting them to the console. I'm calling the function here, two values, and I'm passing in two parameters, a number and a string, one and the string hello. So if I run this, you'll see on the output panel I have one and then hello. I want to show you a couple errors that are common that can happen. One, let's do this. Let's take out the second option here. When I take out the second option and I run this, you'll notice that I get an error. Let's take a look at what this error says. I'm going to drag this compile errors window out, and you'll notice that there's an error code that says incorrect number of arguments, expected to. So what this means is that the function two values is accepting two parameters. I'm only passing it one. Because it requires these two values, it can't execute the function. So what I need to do to correct the error is go back in here and then make sure I pass in that second value. Just for argument's sake, let's pass in a number and see what happens. If you remember in the values up here that I've defined as the parameters of the function, the first one is a, is a number, the second one is a string. I'm now passing in two numbers. Let's save this and run this again. You'll notice that I get another error. In this case, it's saying implicit coercion of a value type to an int to an unrelated type string. That's just a complicated way of saying, look, 
you're taking a number when I'm actually looking for a string. So in order to convert this to a string, there are a couple things I can do. One, if I just want this to be the string 5, I can put two quotes around it, and then run it, and then it runs fine. In this case, it's no longer a number. It's actually a letter, the letter number 5 that you can type on your keyboard. It doesn't actually have a numeric value. So these are two common errors that you might encounter when working with functions. Make sure that you always have that make sure that you always are matching the type of parameter that you're passing into your functions and make sure you have the correct number based on the based on the number of parameters you have in your function definition. Another common error that you might encounter is that when you're actually working with these uh, when you're working with the values at the top, some people accidentally forget to use the comma and use the semicolon. That can also cause some errors that some people find, uh, find that they encounter a lot. So there are the basics of using functions. Again, using the function keyword, you can name your function code using a specific name, like we have here with two values. I can pass in values using the parameter definition here. And then I can also return values, like I did in my first example here, using the return statement. You can have as many functions as you want in your application. Just make sure your functions aren't named the same. That's also something that people can sometimes get tripped up by. So again, using these functions, you can take your code, name them as reusable groups, and then use them anywhere in your ActionScript code.